Guys, good afternoon. My name is Jerry Miller. Welcome to the I Love Seville show. We are live in Charlottesville, the commonwealth of the country and the world. On the I Love Seville network, a big show lined up for you. We were on location um, yesterday, and we, we miss connecting with you guys through this platform. It's one of our most favorite things that we do um, in our work type of life. And I'll tell you what, a show lined up that's pretty, pretty darn robust and a lot of depth from a news top to bottom. Look at the uh, rundown on screen. It's um, nostalgic of what you may see in one of my favorite shows on television, PTI with Tony Kornheiser and Mike Wilbon. We're gonna start with Mayor Walker again making news on her Facebook page. This time about a lockdown to the Charlottesville economy. We'll get to that in a matter of moments. We'll discuss the impact of a lockdown. I certainly thought we as Americans and as leaders in local, state, and federal government, I certainly thought we would have learned from the last lockdown that put 40 million Americans out of work. We'll talk about that on the program today. Um, Mayor Walker is, is, is certainly someone who's coming at this from a health and counseling background, but perhaps because she does not have the entrepreneurship, small business, or any kind of business experience whatsoever, perhaps she is not considering what an extended lockdown during the winter could do to our Charlottesville, Albemarle County, and Central Virginia economies. That story in 30 seconds on this program. Tag a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a business owner that needs to hear what's about to happen or what could happen in this fine community. We'll take a deep dive into the Crozet real estate market. That market absolutely in fuego right now. Q3 2020 versus Q3 2019, a 33% uptick for Crozet, which is absolutely red hot. Crozet, the momentum certainly being driven by COVID, where folks want a little bit more room, a little bit backyard, a little bit more things to do outside with the family and the friends. We'll understand those numbers today on the I Love Seville show. This program, thanks to a number of local businesses, one of our absolute favorites, is Interstate Pest and Service Companies, where for 51 years they have proudly served. Charlottesville and Central Virginia, interstate pest and service companies, four generations of family, and truly a home's best friend. Judah Wickhower is our director. Tom Powell from the Toy Lift will join us. We're live across all social media, and of course, we all archive all our shows anywhere you listen to your podcast and on ilovesevil.com. Undoubtedly, the lead of today's program has to be the Facebook post that came from the mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia. For um, yet another time, the mayor is using her social media platforms, and she certainly can do that, to create news as opposed to having the conversations with reporters um, from print, radio, and television. This morning, two posts that absolutely got sent to me left and right by small business owners, by folks in City Hall, folks in the Albemarle County um, government building as well, where she's straight up saying we need a lockdown. Judah Wickhauer is our director. Why don't you get the quotes on screen, the commentary she offered on her Facebook page. If you could give me a thumbs up when that's on screen. I will read the extended version of what she had to say about a Charlottesville lockdown. Robust, this is from the mayor, Quote, robust financial support will be critical for families and the small business owners during this lockdown. Hopefully this new administration will have a plan that will go into effect on January 20, 2021. The lockdown needs to happen today because we are unnecessarily losing loved ones every day. Furthermore, on a different post, she says, please prepare yourself for an actual lockdown because a lockdown or, or a, because a lockdown is... A lockdown or more, she has grammatical error here. So please prepare yourself for yourselves for an actual lockdown because a lockdown or more unnecessary deaths are our only options. She basically said a lockdown or unnecessary deaths are our only options despite that grammatical error in the Facebook post. Um, 
Lockdown's not the solution. You may disagree with me. If you do, you're entitled to your opinion. Share it in the feed. What we learned from the last lockdown in Charlottesville, across central Virginia, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and across our country, is economic lockdowns negatively impact our most vulnerable citizens, the ones living on the margin financially and socially. The jobs that are lost in lockdowns don't always come back. Some that do come back take a while to get back. On top of that, if you do not get significant government stimulus, you are li literally leaving tens of millions of Americans out to dry, wondering how they're going to pay their bills, put food on the table, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think if we choose paths where we only think inside boxes, which is what an economic lockdown is, the wealth gap in this community and in many, community, uh, many communities across the country will get larger, will become wider. COVID has increased, enhanced, and driven momentum into this wealth gap. Charlottesville, because of COVID-19, Albemarle County, because of COVID-19, and Central Virginia, because of COVID-19, are more expensive now than they were last year. To back that statement up, I can reference housing. Values of homes in our region have uptick 7% year over year. Furthermore, because of COVID-19 and because folks from densely populated areas with big bags of money, working virtually and remotely, choosing to move from these densely populated areas like Northern Virginia to a place like Charlottesville or Central Virginia where they have more of a backyard, a larger house, and more things to do as mom and dad are working from home and kids are learning from home, there's extra competition for homes here so we have an inventory pinch because of that competition. Guys, from an affordability standpoint, our community is less affordable now because of COVID-19. If we have economic lockdowns in Charlottesville, in Central Virginia, statewide, countrywide, the folks that will be impacted the most are the ones living on margin and oftentimes Horribly, unfortunately, folks of color. The stats back it up. There's two economies in this COVID world. The economy where you can live and work virtually and remotely through computers and streaming and Zoom and Skype. Folks that have that luxury and that ability their income, their wealth, has uptick. The folks that have to interact in person, hand-to-hand, -hand, face face-to-face, mouth-to-mouth, their wealth, their income has downticked. A lockdown is not the solution. A lockdown will cost people jobs. A lockdown will cost business owners their companies. When they lose their companies, they can't hire people and keep them employed so they can spend money in the economy locally and pay their bills. If we want a Charlottesville and if we want a Virginia and an America that is run by the Amazons, the Targets, the Walmarts, the Darden restaurant groups that have 700 and some olive gardens, if we want a world where big box brands and big box businesses are all we have from a disposable income standpoint to patronize, then lock down the economy. The big box brands are the ones with the burn rate to sustain a lockdown and still pay their overhead. The mom and pops 
aka the businesses owned by you and I, our neighbors and our family, are the ones that do not have that burn rate. A lockdown is not the solution. It's short-sighted, closed-minded thinking. And it's the type of thinking that will impact folks that are already begging for help, guidance, and leadership. The ones that are vulnerable now. Please understand, please understand what is being discussed in very, very, very public forums. Because these discussions often lead into policy and action. I'm curious of your thoughts and your opinions on Mayor Walker potentially locking down and very pushing a lockdown. Put them in the feed, anywhere you're watching. My phone is blowing up right now. I will get to these comments in a matter of moments. The next headline and the next story we need to get to is real estate. And why I put this second in the rundown of today's show is because it's a reflection of how expensive it is to live here. So Crozet, the real estate market on the western part of Albemarle County is absolutely exploding. And one of the reasons it's exploding is because of COVID-19. People are moving to the area for a little bit more space, a little bit more breathing room, a backyard, some, some, some leg room for the kids to learn at home and for mom and dad to be able to work or Zoom from the house. Crozet, Virginia, real estate sales were up 33%, 33% Q3 2020 versus Q3 2019. I'd like to compare that to Albemarle County in totality. These numbers you can find in the Crozet Gazette. These numbers you can find through, through CAR. You can find this at most real estate brokerages as well, like Roy Wheeler and Ness Realty Company. Let's compare Crozet to Albemarle County in totality. Q3 2020 sales in Albemarle County in totality rose just 2% versus Q3 2019. If you did not include Crozet in the uptick in sales that we saw in Crozet, Albemarle County actually would have declined 2019 versus 2020. That shows you how red hot Crozet is. Crozet, this is an interesting statistic. The average price for a home in Crozet, Virginia, what do you think it is? What do you think the average price for a house in Crozet, Virginia is right now? $509,000, over 500 k for a single-family detached home in Albemarle County. And that's actually a 5% drop year over year because people are buying resales now and not the brand-new house like they were this time last year. So, folks, more information, more statistics, more data to back up the argument I'm trying to make here. This community that we call home, Charlottesville, Central Virginia, Albemarle County, Louisa, Fluvanna, Orange, Green, Nelson, wherever you live, this community is not getting more affordable, it's getting more expensive. This community is not getting more diverse, it's looking more the same. There's more competition than ever to get the homes that are limited in this area. And because of the out-of-market competition from families, from millennials, from single folks that are able to work virtually at their offices, at their big-time you know, big jobs in big-time cities, but live here, because that's what COVID's done to the marketplace, these folks are driving out the OG, the locals, the folks like you and I. That's why shutting down in an economy, even for a short period of time, two, three, four, five weeks, that will only amplify and expedite the wealth and social gap in this area. It will do literally the opposite of what Mayor Walker and her platform was when she ran a couple of years ago for city council. Do, you, do we get that? I think it's so obvious, but maybe it's not. Oh, I just was flabbergasted when my, my phone this morning woke up with, it must have been 
35, 40 text messages from individual folks in this community talking about this, asking me for help. Asking to use the platform to let the community know what the mayor is thinking. Many of her ideas originate here. The temperature is gauged by the response on social, and then the concepts come up in council meetings in person or virtually. A lockdown in the winter months is the definition of stupidity. When the businesses are, are, are not even literally saying to all of us, we don't even know how we can make it through the winter. The fact to even have this in the news cycle or in the conversation when the, the constituents and the citizens and the small and medium-sized business owners are saying we can't even make it potentially through the winter and then for it to fall on deaf ears on the top elected official in the community seems out of touch at best in absolutely poor, poor taste. I'm going to move on. I will get to your comments. I see them coming in. Put them in the comment section, and I relay them on air. Remember, guys, the local municipalities have the opportunity to, to make the standards for COVID more restrictive than what the governor has set. Charlottesville took a half step back from a phase three to a two and a half. So there is that potential in power. You see what I'm saying? Let's talk Richmond business quickly. Tom Powell's gonna join us in five minutes on this program to update us on the toy lift. I mean, the time of year, the toy lift, something that brings so much joy to this community, seeing those darn lifts up by, by, by the mall and someone freezing their, their peanuts off on that bucket as we raise toys for kids. I mean, that's what Charlottesville's all about. We'll catch up with Tom to see what, what the plan is for the toy lift in COVID-19. First, news from business in Richmond, Virginia. This is an interesting business model that's, that's starting to show its face in Richmond. Knife, knives and ax throwing. You heard me correctly, it sounds crazy. We've all been to Pro Renata Brewery or Three Notch Brewery here in Charlottesville, right? And at Pro Renata Brewery or Three Notch Brewery, We've seen the people set up those like portable or to-go um, axe throwing um, situations where there's a bullseye made of wood, you very safely, um, you pay to do it, and you very safely can throw three axes at a bullseye made of wood. I saw it at Pro Renata, I've seen it at Three Notch, I'm, sh I'm sure you've seen it as well. Well, the trend in the fad is that fun activity that you're seeing at breweries, is now turning it into a full-time business in Richmond. A husband and wife are opening up a knife and axe-throwing business. You can throw knives and axes in Richmond at this, what the hell would you call this place? It's in Scott's Edition, the place where all the breweries are located in Richmond. I love Scott's Edition. My wife loves Scott's Edition as well. If you're looking for something fun to do and you're in Charlottesville, go to Scott's Edition Get there around lunchtime, stay till 6, just walk around Scott's Edition, have a beer, get some nosh, hit the various breweries. It is a blast, okay? So this husband and wife team are opening up a knife and, and, and an axe-throwing venue in Scott's Edition. You literally can go to this place, drink beers, drink wine, drink cocktails, and throw knives and axes. And evidently, this is a trend that is happening all over the country. Remember, they trickle from big time cities first down to communities like us, and 60 miles down the road, it's, it's becoming a reality in Richmond. So much so that there's a husband and wife opening up the knife and ax throwing venue, and there's a, co a competitor, a chain, that's coming to Richmond with a knife and ax throwing venue. Wonder if this comes to Charlottesville, only time will tell. Tom Powell in two minutes. News from Roanoke, Virginia. Three Roanoke private schools have officially canceled winter sports. Roanoke Catholic, Faith Christian, and Day Spring Christian 
all announced yesterday private school winter sports at their schools canceled due to COVID. Remember on Monday, I revealed to you that Richmond Public Schools, Richmond, Virginia Public Schools announced on Monday that they will not play winter sports. It's happening. You're seeing it. Winter sports, probably not a reality in the Commonwealth. I hate to say it. Let's just cross our fingers that we get to see this Virginia men's basketball team play. Because Sam Hauser was preseason player of the year. We got the second most votes for preseason player of the year in the ACC. Kihei Clark got one vote for preseason player of the year. Sam Hauser, preseason first team all ACC. Kihei Clark, second team all ACC preseason. Let's hope we get this season in. High school level, sports ain't going to happen. Roanoke, three private schools. Peace and out. Hasta luego. Next headline is something we should follow closely. Chipotle just released, well, it will release on Saturday. This Saturday, Chipotle will open its first digital restaurant. It's going to happen in Highlands, New York, just outside the gates of West Point. This restaurant does not include a dining room. This restaurant does not include a line for ordering. In fact, you can only order food at this restaurant through the Chipotle mobile app or through third-party delivery. The whole point of this restaurant is only to order food through this thing, this phone, or Uber Eats picks your food up there and drives it to you. That's all they're doing. COVID-19 has literally, literally absolutely flipped the restaurant model on its head and now Starbucks, Shake Shack, Burger King, Taco Bell, and now Chipotle are all rolling out digital ghost kitchen models. Order the food on the phone through a menu on an app. Don't go into the dining room, drive your car up, pick it from a window, get off our property. Order the food through Uber Eats, 15 minutes, your Uber driver goes through the Uber drive through at Taco Bell, picks up the food, and drives it to you, get off, our, get off our property. No more going to Chipotle, trying to grab a stack of napkins that are one or two, and then pulling a couple out, and you get a whole wad of them. We've all been in that position. I hate to say this because I love human connection and being around people, but this digital ghost kitchen restaurant model is going to go bananas. It's going to go gangbusters. And when Shake Shack, Starbucks, Burger King, Taco Bell, and Chipotle are all rolling out models of it, you know the trend's going to catch fire. Before we get to Tom Powell, I got some positive news for you. The jobless report. Basically, the weekly report that shows how many people are out of work. The numbers came in positive. 709,000 jobless claims. Okay? The anticipation or the prediction was 740. So it came under the 740 prediction. There are still 21 million Americans collecting benefits, unemployment benefits, but the number is declining. That's a positive. We have a vaccine through Pfizer that is 90% effective on the horizon. Moderna has got a vaccine coming out very soon that is also similarly effective as Pfizer. Two different vaccine options that are extremely effective. Unemployment is dropping. The freaking presidential election is behind us. We got 120 days to get through. Don't tank the economy by doing an economic shutdown like we did earlier this year. That is the, the definition of, of, of short-sighted thinking from someone who's never run a business in their lifetime. I'll say it at that. I'm going to go to uh, Tom Powell, Judah Wickhauer. We've got to make sure we get this uh, mic turned on over here so we can all hear Tom Powell, okay? Hello. Hey, we got Tom. Tom, you are live on the show. Can you hear me, Tom? Yes, I can hear you, Jerry. How are you doing? I'm doing well, my friend. You're live on the program. we got Tom Powell, the founder of the Toy Lift here. All right, Tom, I'm going to get out of your way. My friend, what's the update on the Toy Lift? Well, because of COVID, we're having to do it a little differently this year. Uh, we're not going to have uh, all the remote sites and all the big celebration that we normally have. 
Uh, what we're doing this year is we're asking folks to go to our website, uh, toilet.org, and to uh, click through there. You can see everything you need to learn about the toilet. Uh, right now, what we're doing is we've actually started our fundraising and collection uh, November 4th, we're going on all the way through Friday, December 4th, which was the day the actual toy lift was supposed to take place. But we're doing it a little differently this year. We're asking folks uh, to go to our website, uh, check out the Amazon wish list. Those are items that the children have specifically asked for. And we've gotten more kids this year than we've ever had in the past, which is what we expected because of COVID happening. But we really, really, really need your help this year because... We've got to find a way to make sure that this pandemic doesn't get in the way of Santa Claus. And we've said it, you know, many times this year, Santa Claus doesn't stop just because of this. He has to keep going. We've got to make sure that we take care of our kids. Tom, I love everything about you. I love everything about you do with this community. You are a leader. You are the man. Has this been the most challenging year from a toy lift standpoint since you came up with this concept? Uh, it really has because uh, what we're, we're scared of is that, you know, things go into a lockdown again. And if a lockdown happens, that just shuts everything down, toy lift and businesses, the whole nine yards. And, you know, we're asking folks to, to think and be careful. Uh, we know that folks still want to give us toys. And, you know, if they do, that's fine. But we're asking that you really go where we can have control over what we get and how we distribute it. Uh, normally we do it in three days. This year we're going to do it over a couple weeks. Uh, we've worked it out with the schools. We've worked it out with all our remote sites. Uh, we're trying to keep things as, as safe as possible. The last thing I want to do, and I'm sure you feel the same way, is to, to collect a bunch of stuff, get a bunch of people together to give it out, and send something home that makes somebody, you know, extremely ill or even takes their life uh we want christmas for the children to be a a time that is full of joy and happiness it's something they can always remember and we want to make sure that during this time when there are a lot of folks that are really hurting and you know out of work and or not making what they were making that we're able to take care of as many children as we can a lot of our, our big sponsors are stepping up I know the car dealers have stepped up, and they normally give us money for bikes this year. Unfortunately, we just cannot afford to do bicycles for the, you know, seven, 800 bicycles this year. And they've said, look, take the money that we collect for you and buy toys with it. Take care of the children. And that's our focus. Tom Powell is absolutely the man. This guy is amazing. Give Tom Powell a like and a share here on Facebook. You're getting props from a lot of people here, Tom. Barbara Lundgren is giving you some props here, Tom Powell. Let me, you're a leader in this community, Tom. I'm going to give you an open-ended question for you to go anywhere you want, okay? Go ahead. COVID Charlottesville. How you think it's going? How you think we're doing? You can go anywhere you want to go here. Well, I think we're doing the best we can. I mean, it's a situation where, you know, you've got a lot of folks out there that I don't want to wear a mask. I'm going to wear a mask. My wife and I wear a mask whenever we go out in public. We try and, and, and limit the contact we have with people. Uh, you know, it's just we, we treat it as how we would want to be treated. We're more worried about taking care of others than we are taking care of ourselves. And I think if a lot of folks would think about how are my actions are going to affect someone else? Uh, we'd be in better shape. I know that, <laughs> excuse me, uh, you know, the government officials, the hospital officials are doing everything that they can. I know they're trying to get vaccines out. Uh, I think I heard the other day there was one company that says they've got a vaccine. It's 90% effective. I thought, fantastic. 90% is better than no percent. You know, so it's one of those things where this is a time in this country and around the world where we really have to realize that we are all one great big family and we have to take care of each other and look out for each other. I love it. Final question. Anywhere you want to go with this, we're a platform of hope, Tom Powell. We're going to rally around Toy Lift. We're going to rally around you. How about a message of hope for all of Charlottesville and Central Virginia? This has been a tough year, Tom. We're feeling vulnerable and uncertain. We've got the holidays right around the corner. How about a message of hope for us? 
Well, I think what we can all be thankful for is all the blessings that we've been given throughout the year. I know things have been tough, but there are places and people that have it a lot worse than you do. And this is the time of year when you can give and make someone else feel better. And I've always said, what you give comes back to you tenfold. So if you just remember, I call it the golden rule. Treat others as you would want to be treated. Know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that things will get better. And a few years from now, we'll sit back and go, wow, do you remember what happened in 2020? That was rough. But man, things are great now. Well said, Tom. Anything you need from us, we're there. Anything for the toilet for you, just reach out. I, I sincerely mean that. I'm grateful for your time and your, uh, and, your, and your thoughts today. You have a good afternoon, my friend. You too, my friend. God bless. Take care. Tom Powell, boys and girls, founder of the Toy Lift. That guy's A-plus people. Comments on anywhere you want to go that you've heard on this show so far, put them in the comment section. Send me a DM or a text. I will get to them in moments here on the I Love Seville show. Before I get to your comments, a couple of items I want to get out of the, the box first. The first one, Virginia basketball and Tony Bennett, preseason number one in the ACC standings. How about that? Tony's team, preseason number one in the ACC standings. That is fabulous. Sam Hauser, um, preseason player of the year. He finished two in the voting behind the talented youngster from North Carolina. Um, Kihei Clark even got a preseason player of the year vote. Hauser, the transfer from Marquette, was first team preseason all ACC. Kihei, second team preseason all ACC. This team has got significant talent. Significant talent inside and outside. I think we all know that. As someone who bleeds orange and blue, just like you, just like you, 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 and you guys back there, as someone who bleeds orange and blue, I just want to get the season in. I don't even care about seeing this team in person. I'm fine watching the team on television with no one in the stands. This team it needs to be able to play a season from start to finish. I can't believe I'm saying this. This team has a national title type of talent. UVA's got national championship type of talent, and we all know Tony Bennett is one of the best, if not the best, coaches out there. Quickly, Louisville 2-5 and five at UVA Scott Stadium. Kickoff is 3.30 Saturday, ACC Network. Wahoos are 2-4 and four overall. UVA is a 3.5-point favorite with the over-under at 66 points. This is a, I, I, I want to call it a must-win game for Virginia. Must-win game here. I'd like to see a 500 or better record. They're 2-4. and four. They're playing in an inferior Louisville team. Louisville is traveling on the road. Louisville had a number of players last week test positive for COVID. That's why the game was postponed a week. UVA is playing some good football. They had an extra week of practice to get healthy and to focus on Louisville. I I'm going to call this a must-win game for the Wahoos, who are a three-and-a-half-point favorite. And, and two other items before I get to your comments on this show. Hugh Freeze at Liberty University just got his second contract extension in 11 months. A big-time contract extension that makes him one of the highest-paid coaches at, at, at Liberty's level. Hugh Freeze, he's got a top 25 football team right now. He just beat Virginia Tech. He's getting paid, he's getting paid, and he's getting paid. Hugh Freeze, say what you want about the extracurriculars. The guy in between the lines, X's and O's, knows what he's doing. Now I'm gonna to get to your comments here. Obviously the number one comment, the number one topic on today's program that is generating a hell of a lot of comments on today's show is uh, Mayor Nakia Walker's um, Facebook post earlier this morning about a lockdown and the need to do it immediately. Judah, what I would like for you to do, my friend, you're the director of this program, is I'd like for you to put the quotes from Mayor Walker back on screen. Give me a thumbs up when those are on screen, and for those that are only, um, they're not looking at the visual portion of the show or only listening, I will read the quotes to them. Mayor Walker this morning. 
robust, quote, robust financial support will be critical for families and small business owners during this lockdown. Hopefully this new administration will have a plan that will go into effect on January 20, 2021. The lockdown needs to happen today because we are unnecessarily losing loved ones every single day. On a second post this morning, the mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia said, please prepare yourselves for an actual lockdown because a lockdown or unnecessary, or unnecessary deaths are our only options. Give me your thoughts. I call this closed-minded thinking. I said this is perspective from someone who's never been through the uh, trials and tribulations of running a small or medium-sized business. This is the perspective of someone that was a part-time employee at Parks and Rec just a couple of weeks ago. An activist in a mayor's role. This, from my standpoint, another lockdown after 40-some million Americans were left out of work after the first lockdown, another one, it impacts the most vulnerable and the folks in our community that are financially living on the margin already. The folks that can work via Zoom, the folks that can work for big-time companies, outside market via Zoom and Skype and computer, they ain't, they ain't affected by this. The ones that need to do hand-to-hand, -hand, servers, music, tourism, events, hospitality, retail, restaurants, those are the ones she's crushing. She's crushing, like trying to annihilate you guys. That ain't right in my book. Comments, comments, comments. Put them in the comments section. Um, Andy Wilfong, welcome to the broadcast. Andy, I love when you watch this show, man. I hope you enjoyed that um, Bark Box that you got from um, Patty Zeller at Animal Connection. Thank you for doing that yesterday. Um, Andy Wilfung, we already had a lockdown and it did not work. What health professionals are advocating for a lockdown? And what's our COVID death rate in Virginia? Cough, cough, spoiler alert, it's very, very low. That's from Andy Wilfong. Regina Conley Dodd. Regina, I love when you watch the program. Thank you for tagging your friends. Tell your friends about this show. This is where news is originated and created, and then the TV, the radio, and the print watch this and then report it the next couple days. This is where it starts. Regina Conley Dodd said, those that still get paid, whether they work or not, cannot make decisions of this nature fairly. That's very well said. She's basically saying the, the mayor gets paid regardless if the economy is open or not. Of course she's advocating for a lockdown. She's still getting money in her bank. Regina Dodd, I'm going to change my like on your comment to a heart. Oh, Andy, it was a surprise. He said, thanks for telling my sister what I got her dogs for Christmas. Hopefully she's not watching. Maybe she is watching. If I did spoil the surprise, I apologize that um, Andy's sister. What's your sister's name, Andy? Um, Barbara Lundgren. Oh, Barbara. She says, Jerry, start the petition. Um, many times on this program, I've had this conversation. What if we lead the charge here at the I Love Seville Network of a petition where we ask the mayor to resign. We start a petition. You can choose to sign it or not. And the premise of the petition is multiple decisions and multiple perspectives you've shared over the 12 month, 10 month, that is COVID-19, has clearly indicated that your leadership skills leave some to be desired. Olivia Branch says this, our community has had very low outbreaks within the hospitality community, and there are no reports of weddings being super spreaders. The TJ, TJHD report of 1,700 cases versus 97 hospitalizations is also low compared to other similar sized cities, college towns. Mandatory mask is helping. That's the solution, is mask. Mask, social distancing, not lockdowns. Olivia Branch, well said. Love when Olivia Branch watches this program. More comments coming in. Larry Chartis says, Jerry, I love your show. 
Uh, I turn your show on to my wife, and now she watches it even more religiously than I do. You're 100% right about a lockdown impacting folks that already are struggling to pay their bills. When people choose to lock down an economy as opposed to doing creative ways to keep the economy and everyone safe, it shows that they weren't intended for a leadership position in the first place. Wow. Larry Chartis. <laughs> Nicely done. Larry Chartis on this program. Oh, man. Neil Williamson, Free Enterprise Forum. Love Neil Williamson. This is his comment from Eat This, Not That, November, November 12th, 2020. Coronavirus cases continue to set daily records nationwide, and public health officials are calling for Americans to mask up and change their holiday plans. But there's one thing Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top public health expert, won't be calling for, at least right now, a nationwide lockdown. Exactly right. Exactly right. You know why you don't call for a nationwide lockdown? Because you put 40 million Americans out of work. And the ones that you put out of work are the ones that were already kind of behind and struggling. And let's, let's, let's please consider the mental health toll that's happening, the anxiety toll that's happening, the depression that's happening, the alcohol and substance abuse that's happening that we're not discussing. A lockdown in this community will devastate the demographic that the mayor ran her entire platform upon supporting and championing. It's worth reiterating. Another lockdown, if she leads this charge, will most negatively impact the demographic when she launched her platform. She said she would support and champion throughout entire tenure. Johnny Ornalis, thank you for sharing the show. Keith Smith, thank you for sharing the show. Please understand what is happening because these are very real topics that are going to show up in council meetings on the agenda. And frankly, I, I, at this point, I think she is going to beat to the drum of her choosing it is now up to us to conversate with Councilors Snook, Payne, McGill, and Hill to outvote and keep anything like this from happening. Cena's brother owns Lampo. Understood? She's got to get it. Lloyd, I know, certainly does. And Heather comes from a small, medium-sized background mindset. All right, follow it. We'll bring it up tomorrow. This is real, raw, and very much could impact things here in our backyard. I got to get out of here. I'm going to close with a final word. Before I close with the final word, I encourage everyone to watch the I Love Seville Daily Digest. It's this entire show in five minutes or less, five days a week at five o'clock on the I Love Seville Network, the I Love Seville Daily Digest, 5 o'clock today. I want to get out of here um, on this note. There are roughly 2,700, 2,700 Albemarle County students learning in classrooms and in person. Started yesterday. Let's not perfect, let's not expect perfection with the curriculum. Perfection is the enemy of productivity. Let's stay open-minded. Let's realize we're in uncharted territories. Let's realize having the kids in a classroom is a positive. Is it going to be the ideal learning scenario you want as a mom and dad? No. But having the kids in the classroom is a positive and beats the alternative. Do the best you can with what you got. That's where we're at. We hope they wear the mask. We hope the kids stay six feet apart. The temperature checks and the hand washing, the best we can with what we got. Be patient, be open-minded, be kind, be empathetic. We're figuring this out as we go, but we can do it as a community. 
I'm Jerry Miller. This is the I Love Seville Show. Take care. A lockdown would cripple this economy. You know that would cripple this economy if they did that. I mean, you're talking about like any semblance of the restaurants would be crushed by that. Like how could the restaurants, we're talking about the restaurants not even being able to make it through winter. Now we're gonna add a lockdown to not be able to make it through winter? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? I agree. Or I mean, do you think I'm missing, reading that wrong? No, I think it didn't work before, it's not gonna work now. Right, what, I, I don't understand. Are we expecting to change history?